Community Connections CPMS Local sounds, thoughts, passions, and success Celebrating local Your neighbor's got a story to tell Community Connections CKMS Happy Monday, Waterloo Region. It's the 8th of May, 2023. You're listening to CKMS Community Connections. My name is Bob Jonkman. Today we have special guests in the studio. We have Annabella Tadic and James Matar, who are going to be your guest hosts on CKMS Community Connections today. Welcome to the studio. Go ahead, Annabella. Annabella is going to start us off, and then about halfway through the show, we'll have James taking over. So, Annabella Tadic, take the show. Hello, I'm Annabella Tadich, an aspiring musician, piano player, and music student at St. Mary's High School. Today, as your host, I'm going to dive deep into the world of industrial music, a very interesting underground genre of music. Fasten your seatbelts because we're, we're in for a wild genre-bending ride. But before we get into the nitty-gritty of industrial music, let's take a quick detour through the post-punk scene. Picture the late 1970s and early 1980s a time when punk rock was shaking things up. It was rebellious, raw, and oh so refreshing. But some folks out there were thirsty for something even more daring, something that would shatter the barriers of conventionality and commercialism. And that's where post-punk came shredding in. It took the raw energy of punk and twisted it into something entirely new and intriguing. It was a sound of rebellion evolving, paving the way for genres like industrial music to flourish. Now let's talk about a band that's as cool as it gets, Nine Inch Nails. These guys took the industrial music scene by storm, infusing it with their own brand of dark, intense energy. They're the masters of blending abrasive sounds, heavy rhythms, and thought-provoking lyrics. These guys somehow brought abrasive and harsh musical themes into the mainstream. Now here's one of their most famous tracks, Down In It. Feeling so 
right, so that was Down In It. All right, so hold on tight because we're not done yet. We got to play homage to the pioneers of industrial music. The, those visionaries who laid the foundation for this interesting and unique genre. One band that deserves a special shout out is Throbbing Gristle. Hailing from the UK and formed in 1975, these boundary pushing artists created mind bending soundscapes that challenge the norm. They dare to explore controversial themes, leaving a mark on industrial music as a whole. So get ready for their track Hot on Heels of Love because it's going to blow your mind.
I'm gonna cover three songs. First one being Levels by Avicii. I think the song is nicer to listen to before like exercising or something because it could get many people pumped up. So just before I play the song, I just want you to listen to how he uses um, the same melody and how he changes the pitch and uses different sound effects so that this song doesn't sound as repetitive. Um, part of part of the things to listen to other than just the pitch it's um sort of the drop so when he stops playing the drum kit that's one part to listen to and he uses many many different sound effects so yeah l- let's hear it
that's Levels by Avicii. I hope, I hope you guys enjoyed the song. I, I really enjoyed it as well. Um, so what makes you excited sort of when you're exercising or before exercising or something, it's the fact that he keeps on adding effects or drum effects or um, any kind of effect. He builds up to a certain point and then he just removes them. This is called the drop. It normally sort of helps him kind of restart the song It'll, um, give it, uh, can make it sound less repetitive, and it's really, really nice to, to listen to, and it could get people excited at times. So, um, he uses sw swoosh sounds, so it's um, kind of like when he um, kind of like when you hear when as he's building up to that like very very high point you can hear him you can hear like a kind of like a swoosh sound I, I don't i'm not too sure how to explain it but it's um this also makes helps build the song to a certain point the nice thing about this kind of music is it's something very simple you can make it home and even though like avicii makes it look easy it's not as hard as most people think he mainly has two melodies in the song. He uses a two-bar melody that is being looped over and over again. And um, to make his song sound less repetitive, he uses he he changes the pitch, so that makes it sound uh, like you're listening to something different, even though it's the same thing being repeated over and over again. He changes the drum beat. He uses many different sound effects to make his song sound uh, a lot better. Uh, this gives the song a lot of variety. In addition to all that, he uses reverb. Reverb is kind of like an echo, which makes the song sound um, less plain. So it would make it sound um, more interesting rather than just plain, plain music. And yeah, that's all I have for Avicii. Um, the second song that I'm going to talk about is called Ghosts and Stuff. Uh, for the song, um, there are, there are lyrics in the song. There are vocals, so I don't think this would be something nice to listen to when you're trying to work or trying to relax. I would listen to this if, let's say, I'm on a road trip or I'm just looking to uh, listen to something in the car or something. It's a really nice song. It's a really really nice song. He uses many different effects. Um, not the same ones as Avicii, but he uses other effects. He introduces vocals a lot more, so in this case, that lets him that lets him play around with many more things, and it lets him get away with using the same melody over and over again. Um, his song is kind of like... Um, yeah, let, let's just listen to it. With you 
Yeah, so that's it for the song. Um, again, he uses vocals, so this lets him get away with using the same melody over and over again because the vocals sort of distract you from this repetitiveness throughout the song. Um, another interesting thing he used was kind of a distorted uh, synthesizer sound. This uh, sort of serves as the bass or maybe the lead sound. Um, what's really nice about it is how he uses it. He doesn't really make it sound too like too distorted, so it doesn't sound annoying to listen to, but rather it's kind of it's a little nicer to listen to. Um, he also uses simple drum beats throughout the whole song, so that way, if he had used a more overwhelming drum beat, people would have th people would have. Uh, wouldn't have liked the song. They would have thought it was a bit too loud because because of the bass sound, because of how loud the vocals are, because of uh, how the melody is, um, because of how loud the melody is in general. Um, he has a... Other than this distorted synthesizer sound, he has a sort of a quiet bass line in the background. It keeps the song from sounding also a bit too plain and the vocals play a huge part in re reinforcing that sound because he's sort of singing to the bass line. Um, overall, I think it's a really, really nice song and he uses very interesting effects to make his uh, song unique. Um, for this next song, it's, it's by a Canadian artist. It's called How to Let Go by Rome. Uh, this kind of song is nice to listen to when relaxing or when just you're trying to work or something. Some people might not like it because it's a bit too fast-paced for them, but uh, I, I think it's great. Um, there are vocals in the song, but he uses them in an interesting way. So he kind of uses vocals to make an instrument, and using those that instrument, he creates a melody. And he also has a different melody with a different instrument, which which uh, makes the song pretty interesting. Um, yeah, let's that's it. Let's listen to the song.
Live for uh, R- Rome, How to Let Go. That's the song. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, the drum beat that's playing in the background is what makes the song very, very fast paced. So that's why some people might not like it when they're just trying to relax. Um, the song is also kind of built around the drum beat. Most people kind of make a melody and then build a drum beat to suit the melody. But in this case, I think the artist used um, the drum beat and added the synthesizer to it so that the drum beat is playing throughout the whole song and the synthesizer is sort of the extra effect kind of. Um, he, m- he makes sure he plays long notes. So um, the drum beat is... So he plays very long notes on the synthesizer. Uh, that way the drum beat is heard more than the uh, uh, synthesizer. You can hear this throughout like the middle of the song. He kind of, he plays um, the drum beat and then you can hear very, very long notes or very like echoey notes. He also uses um, his vocals as instruments, as I said before. And he does add reverb, which I talked about in the last song, uh, to make the sound of the vocals sound a lot more echoey and less plain. So instead of having a melody playing, he had a drum beat playing throughout the whole song, and then he had the synthesizer and the uh, the synthesizer and the vocals uh, sort of fade in and out throughout the song. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much everything I have for this show. I really got hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, thank you for tuning in. I'm 
girl, you struggle with words and names. Wanting to be seen, even through the pain. I tried to say you what I thought you'd like to hear. You're doing great, and there's no reason to fear. I want to see you an elephant. A tone. Thought that I could help if I built us a home. Wanted connection, but you couldn't end. Thought you That was Nomenclature by Loontown. Shackled to the stone of memory Coming home feels like drawing in the sand As the tide rises And mirrors only show you the smoke Inhale while you're stuck in Now 
you've been listening to songs by Loon Town on CKMS Community Connections. My name is Bob Jonkman. Today we've had two guest hosts in the studio, Annabella Tadic and James Matar. Excellent job, you two. It's uh, been a wonderful show because you've put a lot of work into this. Thank you. You're with um, St. Mary's High School? Yes. Yeah, this is a school assignment, isn't it? It is. Yeah. What, uh, what program is it that you're doing this for? It is a music and computers program. Um, it is a class that teaches music production. Uh, yeah, we, our teachers thought it would be a nice experience to kind of talk on the radio and it would be um, just in general a fun experience and it could help us uh, later on in the future. So in the music production class, do you actually produce music or do you do what you're doing here today, announcing music, analyzing music? Uh, we, we do both. We, we need to listen to music so that we know, so that we know, um, so we get more ideas and get more creative, but we also produce music and we're trying to make songs and sort of just, you know, produce music, show it to each other and maybe we'll collaborate with our classmates sometime. Do you have any music that you've recorded that we could play on the radio? Sadly, I, I don't. I didn't think, I didn't think I'd, be, I'd have to play some now. <laughs> 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 I, I didn't really prepare for that. But um, maybe another time I'll, I'll uh, have some music ready that, that I made and we can listen to it. That'd be great. We love to play music from local KW artists, uh, Kitchener and Waterloo in Cambridge. And we have a special category for that, KW content. And so we uh, identify that and play lots of that because we just want to promote local musicians. So if you've been recording stuff, not just you, James, and you, Annabella, but anybody out there who's listening, if you've been recording music, send it to us at office at radiowaterloo.ca, and it'll go to our uh, music committee. And they'll process it, put it on the air, and probably invite you to come on the radio to talk about the music that you've done. I've, uh, I've had bands coming into the studio before to play their music and uh, talk about what they're doing. So I noticed that the two of you had a different approach to the music that you were playing. Annabella, do you, uh, the music that you chose, you gave us more of a history of the music. And James, you gave us more of a, an analysis of the composition. So is... It seems different. Um, have you both fulfilled the assignment? I'd say so. <laughs> I think you probably have too. How do you come across the music? What, what, how did you choose your music, Annabelle? Well, I, it, it all started with uh, one of my favorite bands, Nine Inch Nails. So I kind of decided to delve a little bit deeper in the genre and decided to talk about the history of it. Yeah. And how did you do your research? Well, I just discover music, and then I decide to research the music. Yeah, and that's, uh, that comes from internet research or yes, actually internet. cracking books at the library? Internet and research. Internet research. How about you, James? You had some uh, very deep analysis of how the music was composed. Um, yeah, so for, for my songs, I chose, chose to talk more about the music rather than the history, because I thought that would be more interesting to listen to rather than when songs were made. And, um, yeah, I, j I just thought this would be way more interesting than the history because there isn't too much background that I could find or, like, not enough to talk about in, in this show. Yeah. yeah. If you ever do uh, want to talk about more music, uh, either the history of the music or the composition of music or any other aspect of music, we have lots of room on our broadcast schedule. Uh, if you have a look at uh, radiowaterloo.ca slash schedule, you'll see that there's colored spots. Uh, anything that's green or yellow are uh, syndicated shows or uh, archived shows or repeat broadcasts. Um, and I would much rather, and I think the entire station would much rather have that filled with new content created locally, you know, for the community, about the community, and by the community. So that uh, if you want a radio show, you can pick any of those slots there and uh, come join the station and put your own music on the air, your own commentary, your own analysis, 
Uh, we need more curated uh, shows, especially um, specialty music, things like blues and jazz, concert music, um, uh, bluegrass, uh, you know, you name it. Uh, all the different genres are, are not well represented on our schedule at the moment. So uh, if you have a, an idea for a show, look at uh, our web page and uh, come start a show with us. So you're from uh, St. Mary's School. You're in, uh, in which, uh, which year? Oh, uh, 11. Great. We're both in grade 11. Yeah. And how long does the, uh, the program go for? Is it a one semester course or is it something that you take year after year? I think it's a one semester course. Um, we kind of research about music and learn different like new strategies to make different kinds of music. And by the end of the course, we're going to make a song and we're going you know, to post it online and see what happens. And have it on the radio. Yeah, we'll have it on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got about five minutes left. Let's listen to a little bit more music. Uh, the music today is all by Loon Town from their Slow Space album. Uh, Annabella, if you want to slide up the uh, airtime slider there, then uh, we'll listen to whatever's on the air at the moment. listening to CKMS Community Connections on CKMS FM Radio Waterloo. CKMS Community Connections is a pro production of Radio Waterloo. It's uh, produced at the radio station and is sponsored by Radio Waterloo. My name is Bob Jonkman. The executive producer is Jennifer Strong. Associate producers are Jeff Steger and the opening theme music is by Steve Todd. Today we had in the studio special guests Annabella Tadic and James Matar. Thank you so much for coming in and being our guest host for the hour. CKMS Community Connections airs every Friday, every alternate Friday at 3 p.m. and Mondays at 11. I'll be back next week. Talk to you then. <laughs>